Welcome in, friends. This is Voice in the Kingdom, and we appreciate each and every one that is tuned in here live this morning over the air. Over the 20 counties in central Kentucky or on the live stream all across the world or even on the re-air, we appreciate each and every one of you. We can't do it without our sponsors and underwriters like First State Bank, the People's Lawyer, Alex Stone, or even our programmers like Wagon Tracks with James Coates at 530 in the morning. Can't do it without those folks here on the Box 2 Radio Network, and we are so grateful for volunteers and staff and everybody that comes together to make it all work, especially when we get folks all the way from Marshall, Texas to call us on a Tuesday every week here on Voice in the Kingdom, like Brother Jeff Arrington. How you doing this morning, brother? I'm doing wonderful, man. Wonderful. How y'all doing, brothers? Yeah, we're doing good. We got Whitney back in the studio with us this morning. Glory. So we're very excited. Oh, that's, that's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, boy. Hey, man. Man, he's fresh <laughs> off of his uh, evangelistic trip to the Bourbon Street there in Louisiana. Gave us a great rundown yesterday of what the Lord did during that trip, and and man, it's uh, it's exciting to have him back in the studio, and great to have you on the phone with us this morning. Brother Jeff called me while I was down there preaching. We, yeah. we turned off the, the box and stopped and talked to him for a while, and then went back to preaching. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, man. It's, it's just so good to be a part uh, of this new breed. You know, I, that scripture out of uh, Zachariah, man, says that he plucked us out of the fire, man, gave us a chain of garment and gave us a place to stand by him. And, and I'm just uh, thankful to be able to stand with the Lord, you know, and I, and I, and our will certain situations and generations, we get to stand with him. So I'm just blessed. Amen. Amen. With this change of raiment, you know, he took away the filter garments and, and put some clean clothes on me, man. And I, hallelujah. Hey, I'm yeah. Part of this citizenship that's in heaven. Mm. And I, I have no complaints. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and uh, I just want to shout out to the body of Christ, you know. We we are blessed people to have uh the Father, you know, in our life and to have the revelation of Jesus Christ and and learning more and more and more his reality, who he is. And uh I've been in the Lord almost forty years now and I'm still learning, you know, we'll 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 ever be learning who he is, but uh I just thank God for the light that I have now. Amen. Man, that's good. And and you know what, Brother Jeff, this kingdom um, mindset, this kingdom walk and journey that you've been teaching, it's uh, yeah. it's difficult for a guy like me, and I guess it's been difficult for you for years probably, to um, present that to a lot of people. Because I'm not going to say who, but I was talking to some to some guys been doing ministry forever. They're, some of them are in the... Um, Assemblies of God, and some of them are in this, these other organizations. And I was just trying to explain what ice tip of the iceberg part of it that, that you've discipled into me about the government right. of God and elder elder rule and and, and just you know um, just the things that you've taught us here and taught me on the phone when we talk personally. And it's very there's there's a uh, there's a wall there. There's a resistance. There's to a it. there's a resistance there. Yeah. There's and and it, it, it it's a it's a tough med- message to get these these older guys to say hey maybe you know let me hear it because there's um you know especially with most most places and most circles the pastor is the president uh-huh. <laughs> that's just how he's the president and what he says trumps everything and it's a hard message to get across so. I, I, I try. I'm. I'm gonna learn a little bit more before I try to be on that front line like that. Cause I mean, I, I understand, man. And you know, uh, well, welcome to the what Jesus Christ faced when He hit the earth. You know, He, <laughs> he brought a whole, a whole new paradigm, a whole new mindset. You know, when He said the kingdom of God is at hand, He was. He brought a whole new constitution and way of thinking. You know, He revolutionized a whole system as far as the the, the religious systems of that day. You know, he struggled and struggled. You know, they were very racist, very prejudiced, see, and uh, politically, you know, correct, all this stuff. But when it comes down to, to, to the kingdom of God, it's all about uh, humility, first of all, and, and being able to be taught by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, being able to, to uh, transition from one truth to the next. We call it linking truths because God is always... Uh, revealing himself on another level. And a lot of times, you know, we get comfortable, men hate to change, and, 
take to be transformed, but that's the scripture. See, we, we've we been called to behold him, and the more we look at him, the more we change, right? Amen. Yeah. Transformed by the renewing of our mind, the Bible says. Come on. You there? Yeah, I'm still here. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just said, I just quoted that scripture. You said be transformed. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's that's where we're at in a lot of places. we got to get people's minds renewed to where the, this old way of thinking, these old these old paradigms that you call them, they're, 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 they go, wow, there's there's another way. There, there's, there's the God way, the original, what he meant. Yeah. That religious there resistance, though, is, is and, uh, like you said, it's right. difficult to penetrate. And, and I did get these guys I was talking to to say, you know, if, Whitney, you had a group of spirit-filled men and they were just totally in love with Jesus, I could see how what you're presenting would work. But that's almost <laughs> impossible to get because, cause, you know, everybody's got their own personality and everybody's got their own uh, glory. That they want to be in the spotlight. He said, so if the chances of you getting five or six guys that are just totally dead <laughs> and in love with Jesus – and I'm like, isn't that what we're supposed to and be? I was going to say, isn't that what we're supposed to be? Isn't that the gospel? <laughs> yes, it is. It is our relationship with him is what make everything work. And see, and, and that's that's the issue. See, and uh, th that's why God, I'll, I'll, I'll skip over one. I mean, a thousand to find one. See, that the, the heart is is turned toward him. His eyes run to and fro, searching the whole earth. To find somebody's heart turned toward him Ooh, and not on. their own selves. And uh, even in the church, see, we got to teach people to empty out of themselves to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Mm. And uh, that's starting from the, the root, the foundation of Christianity is, is loving Jesus more than you love yourself, right? Right. That's the, that's the, that's one on one. And, and see, we take the same philosophy of the world into the, Try to take it in the kingdom. It won't go in the kingdom because you got to empty yourself out to enter the kingdom. See, you got to be born of His Spirit and empty yourself out to come under His rule. And that, and that's what I want to talk about today: is understanding from a from a national perspective, our nation, and what made her great was her humility and uh, her ability to acknowledge God. See, what made this this land great? Uh, one of the greatest nations has ever been because of our recognition of Christ. And uh, this is where the scripture says, I read it last week out of Proverbs uh, uh, 14, 34. Uh, righteousness, see, exalts the nation. See, it's, it's right standing with God, right relationship with God, what's exalt a nation, see. And that's any nation. Any nation that will get right with God, the people will get right with God, God's going to exalt them. And, uh, you know, good news is righteousness makes a nation great. Corning a phrase from, from uh, President Trump, make America great. Well, it starts with being right with God first. Right. And see, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that, that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, the man lived. See, once we get that back and put the word back in our, our homes, put the word of God back in our schools, uh, you know, put the word back in our universities and put God back in his right place, see, that, that's going to be a struggle. But I can say this, the individual, now let's go back to the individual. You, Whitney, Quincy, if we get right with God and put him in his right place, God's going to exalt us, see. Mm. God's going to, see, because it, it says in, in Isaiah 2 that in the last days, God's going to exalt uh, uh, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted. Now he's talking about his family, those born of, born of the Spirit, those that are part of him. He's gonna be he gonna begin to exalt them everywhere they go. See, in these last days, because he has the power, and he understands the darkness that we're facing. But God's gonna show Himself stronger. See, the light is always stronger than the darkness. So there is a remnant. Let's go back to the remnant again. Every now and then you'll run into that one, Whitney, that one. Right. <laughs> that will hear. <laughs> see? See? And uh, that's what God looks for. Uh, he skipped over. Remember, he, he skipped over seven brothers to find one. Remember? That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he skipped over seven brothers, and, and he denied seven of them. He, until he got to the to the eight little old boy, he said, that's the one right there. Yeah. Not the one that's you would have thought. That's the one. <laughs> Huh? Not the one you would have thought. There you go. 
Yeah. See, because man look at the outer appearance, but God look at the heart. That's so right. God is searching for hearts that are turned toward him. And I know we have listeners out there that love the Lord, that want to move in Christ, because the kingdom is all about progression and movement, see? It's not about being stagnant and stuck in your religion and stuck in your own mindset and your own pride or your own knowledge and uh, thinking you know everything and you got it. No, we don't. We have to empty out and go from vessel to vessel and from glory to glory, see? Because God wants to fill us up with more and more and more of him if we humble ourselves see and and that's what jesus says the, the kingdom of god is to the meek to the poor and uh poor in spirit those that are humble god said i will look to the man as of a broken uh contract heart a broken spirit god said that's the man i'm gonna look to that's the man i'm gonna dwell with humility so we just keep searching and god will bring you to the right one and that's the one that he chose amen see? So there is a remnant, I believe, that's, that's hungry, that have ears to hear, but you're going to run into the system and paradigms and walls and, uh, you know, <laughs> till Christ comes back. Right. Well, I'm going to tell them all about Jesus, and I'm going to tell everybody about the kingdom. Telling everybody, buddy. Amen. All right. Well, that's a well, good there you go. that's a good stopping point right there. We're going to take this break. We're going to come back and get more into this uh, with our buddy Jeff Arrington out of Marshall, Texas. Uh, we're going to dive into some more kingdom mindset when we come back here on Voice in the Kingdom. All right, and we are back with Voice in the Kingdom. All right, thank you, Anita. We are back, and we have Brother Jeff Arrington on the phone from Marshall, Texas, and we just had a listener call, Brother Jeff, that wanted your perspective on uh, something that happened recently, and I'm pretty sure it was in Portland. Uh, we read the news the other day about the uh, people that were burning Bibles and burning the American flag, and um, they wanted to, uh, our listener wanted to get your perspective on that event. Well, of course, we, we, we were reaping the whirlwind of a generation uh, without the understanding of the knowledge of God Almighty. And, you know, the mystery of iniquity, lawlessness is in the earth. Jesus said that because the lawlessness, you know, even the love of many will wax cold because of lawlessness, see. And uh, we're starting to see the word of God is true. And, uh, uh, I don't put it past me to burn the Bible and flags and all kinds of stuff because uh, the nature uh, of that, that individual, see, comes from a nature that, that's destructive and, and destroys. That's what Satan infiltrated uh, Adam and Eve, and he put his seed there, and, and we're reaping the world with him. But there is an answer. His name is Jesus. Get back to the antidote is Jesus, see. Yeah. And uh, if we would put him back in our homes, the fathers and mothers would put the word of God. God sent his word to heal us, deliver us from destruction, see. And if we put the word back in its rightful place. And uh, that's all. That's, that's the kingdom. The kingdom of God, its first order is righteousness, see. And uh, Jesus even said it. Uh, uh, seek first the rule and the reign of God and his righteousness, his right to rule. God has a right, see. And uh, his right to rule is already established in heaven. Nobody can challenge him. It was challenged one time, and and and, and uh, our principality was kicked out to the earth. <laughs> and here we see that he's challenging again God's right to rule through us. And all we got to do is understand this and come under this, because you have no authority unless you're under authority, right? Yeah. So once we submit ourselves to God, the devil got to flee. Yeah. He got to flee. But how does God establish his rule? Through righteousness. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, 8, God established his rule through righteousness. See, right. And uh, and uh, there's a scripture in Proverbs 29, 2. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. One, tr one translation says, show me righteous rulers, and I will show you a happy people. Show me a wicked ruler. And I will show you a miserable people. <laughs> 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 that is so true. And, and you can see when we have righteous rulers in our cities, you know, in our, our towns, in our nation, see, people rejoice. But when we have wicked rulers, there's a moaning on us, a groaning inside, because something is not right. It's not right. See? So 
God's throne is established through righteousness. And when we see all this lawlessness and all that's a direct fruit from a from a runaway rebellious principality that still believes he can win this thing. Amen. And that's how deceived he is. He's fighting. You know what I'm saying? He already lost two thousand years ago. Yeah. And see, Chris, we are here to enforce that. We are enforcers. That's right. Whitney, men may not listen to us, right? Whitney, some men may not listen to us, right? Right. But guess what? Demons have to. Ooh, <laughs> glory. <laughs> that's right. See, that's all right. When men, some men may not hear you and hold on to their, their religion and their paradigms and their, all of their agendas and motives and money and whatever, positions, whatever. But demons, they have to listen to us. They have right. no choice. Because God is in the, he's, he's promoting his sons right now. And uh, the authority, the badge of, of authority now is resting upon those that's been trained by God Almighty himself, see. And we're going to see a, a paradigm shift in the body of Christ. God's going to begin to promote now his sons that he's trained in his own house, see. And uh, those have received the word, and that word has become flesh. That word has become part of their life and they're changing every year more and more and more this is the kingdom the kingdom is about progression and change right and if, if you look at your life and you're still cussing and still stuck in some type of uh, uh, addiction you're not in the kingdom hmm. you're in religion but if you're in the kingdom of God and, and, and you're flowing with the Lord things are going to break off of your life there's a higher authority a higher rule in your life that will break all that mess off <laughs> see that's proof of his kingdom in, uh, internally there's no way I can continue to 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 be like I, I used to be, calling on Jesus. There's no way. There's no way. Hallelujah. See? And this is where uh, uh, we need to show our youth today that the, there's power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And He gives you the ability to resist sin, not only just to resist it, but to take dominion over it and trample over that mess. See. But we got to give them more than religion, right? More than our, our doctrines, more more than our denominational teachings. We got to give them Jesus, that same Jesus. Remember the story when the disciples came back? Uh, they had cast all them devils out, you know. The seven they came back with all this power, and they were so happy. <laughs> and, and Jesus said, "Now, okay, eat my flesh and drink my blood." And, and the Bible says, "Many of them from that point turn away from him." Right. Right. And then the Bible says, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, now, will you also go away? And you know what Peter's response was? I love this response. He said, where are we going? That's right. You're the only one who has the words of life. Oh, that's it. The Your word of life. set me free. Your word caused me to have the victory. Your word gives me eternal life. Your words is what I need. Hmm. See? And people realize God sent his word, Christ. If we would understand that and, and preach Jesus purely and get out of all of our agendas, right, get back to the kingdom of God, preaching that kingdom, we'll see things fall off people's lives, man. Glory. I listened to a testimony last night about a, a, a man used to be a homosexual, and he was trapped in that fire down there in Florida a few years ago. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. And he got shot and all that, and he grew up in a Christian home. And, and he said, during that ordeal, he was on that floor in that club, bleeding, and he was pleading with God, you know, to save him. And God saved him. Now he changed his life. He understands that that homosexuality is not of God. He said he loves Jesus, and that was the end of that. When he denied himself and let Jesus take his heart, that evil, unclean spirit left his life. Wow. Mm. That's the power. See, that's the kingdom. That's the power of God. That's the power of that union with Christ. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. That's See? right. He breaks that mess off. See, that unclean spirit, they're lying to you, telling you you're born that way. That's a lie. See? Yes, That lie, that young lady saying she got a right to kill a baby. That's a lie. See, Jesus break all that mess. Amen. All that mess has to go. That demon that lies to us and said we're superior than another race or this or that and this or that and black lives matter. That's all I'm saying. See, all this lies. God breaks all that mess off. The kingdom, see, because it's lies from the devil. Hmm. And if we can get back to the truth, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, we can see people delivered through the kingdom word of God. See, one thing is needed, but that's the kingdom of God. 
That's why he said, look, I got something for you. Yes, Satan came in. Yes, he, he stole the mantle uh, uh, from Adam. But I'm here to, to take it back. And he did. Amen. He took the dominion back. He took it back. And now he wants to give it to us again. And I have it in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you can have it. But you got to put away the religion and take a hold of Jesus, right? That's right. You got to take hold of Jesus and be teachable. Uh, be willing to learn. Be willing to, to humble ourselves and, and let God bring fresh bread. Hallelujah. Our daily bread. God wants to bring a daily bread. And I want to get into that during the 30 minutes, uh, Quincy. Yeah. Well, you know, you, a key word there is uh, humble ourselves. That's the I, that's the hard part. When Whitney was talking earlier about that, uh, you know, that religious resistance, that's where it comes down yeah. to. Right. Pride. Yes. Hey, I just wanted you to know. Pride, pride of knowledge. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted you to know that, that that word you pointed out to me in the Bible a few months ago, I've really been looking this word up and trying to apply it to my life, that word prudence. <laughs> and yeah. uh I understand it, and I was. I understand that uh, you're a wise leader, uh, with I was. I was. I just wanted. God, to, God's, God's got His hands on you. Know He, when when God put His hands on you, man, all you can do is surrender uh, to the Potter as He He turned the wheel. You know, <laughs> He's gonna make us vessels unto honor. Well, he he uh, had to. He saw it in real life. I, I seen it. I seen it in real life down there on Bourbon Street because. We walked by. We walked by these guys, and and they were come find out. We looked up what they believed in. They were like Muslim militia or something, but they were preaching our Bible, but in a, uh -huh. in, a in a wild way, and and they and they lured a couple of the guys with me in, and I, they I, next thing I know, I looked up and they're gone. I walk over to see what they're doing, and I could tell all of a sudden, especially when this one guy got out of the car. He had to be seven foot tall, four hundred pounds. He's Biggest one of the biggest men I've ever seen in my life. Yesterday he was six eight and three fifty. Well, well, just he, yeah, <laughs> he was, I'm telling you, I wish we'd record. It's the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he was go ahead. huge. Yeah. He ought to be just in the movies how big he was. Yeah, and uh, and, and used to be before I started thinking about this word prudence, they would have probably lured men because what they were basically saying is, uh, you 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 white guys are going to bow to us and we're better than you and and, and yeah. they were trying to prove it by scripture and they lured a couple of the guys in with me and they was getting them fired up and and I just looked at them and I said uh, let me ask you one question all right do we believe in the same Jesus do we believe that Jesus came to save everybody on this earth and they couldn't answer that question so I I looked at my buddies and I grabbed them and I said we're out of here we're not getting in this foolish debate and we walked now see it used to be when they started putting us down and all that stuff, I'd have been the first guy to t convince them they was wrong. Yeah. But after you started showing me this word prudence, what did I want in that fight for? I'm not. I'm not getting in yeah. that fight. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, you don't catch your your pearls. See, you got you got to hold on to your pearls when when Satan is, has somebody wrapped up like that and not willing to learn. So you're wasting your time. You got to be more wiser than that. Sure. And that's what Paul was talking about. You got to be wise as a serpent. See, sometimes in general as a dull because everybody ain't, ain't open to truth. You see, yeah, and, uh, it was a, to even think that you, your all race is superior to another. You are already out the lunch. See, that's right. See, when it comes to the kingdom, because the kingdom, like we said before, it, it levels all the playing fields. Man, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God levels everything. Even Jesus said, you, you, even the Jews, it leveled the Jews. Nicodemus, I don't care about your, your plaque and your Jewish heritage. you got to be born again. <laughs> the same thing with, it don't matter if you came from Europe, Africa, or, or China. you got to be born again. That's right. See, the kingdom levels everything. Anybody that promotes the flesh already deceived. Amen. This, this is a spiritual kingdom, man. My God, it's, it's 101. And, and for Satan to blow somebody's soul up, blow their heart, their head up about their, their natural lineage, is, is, what Bible are you reading? That's that's it. But but another. So I know we're going to break, but uh, don't start me to preaching up here. That's all right. <laughs> but but another that's another um, nugget that comes with when you get this kingdom mindset. Yeah. Get your don't. Let the enemy get you into a pointless de debate, a pointless yeah. discussion, a pointless battle. 
You know, let the Lord direct you and show you what battles to fight. And don't waste your time getting in battles and asking him to get you out of them. It's smarter (laughs) to ask him to show you which battles to fight. And uh, there you go. I've just been learning that lately because used to be I was ready to fight any battle. Show me a giant, I'll cut his head off. Used to be mad at you, but now it's like, Lord, show me the right giant. The battle is mine, says the Lord. There you go. There you go. All right, well, we'll take this. Uh, right. We'll take this top of the hour break, and then we get a whole half hour no breaks preaching coming from Brother Jeff. Glory, Aronson. it's coming. Amen. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get into it here in just a minute on the other side of this break. Stick around with us here on the Box Two Radio Network. This is Voice in the Kingdom. All right, we are back here on the Box 2 Radio Network, and this is Voice in the Kingdom. We're here just uh, just a little after the top of the hour on a Monday, or pardon me, a Tuesday morning. I was trying to reverse time there for a minute. I was pulling. See, usually I have somebody across from me, Anita, and that's what it is. I know. I almost did say Thursday, and I pulled myself <laughs> back and was like, no, it's Tuesday. Jeff's going to be Because Jeff's on the phone. That's right. All right. Well, uh, we're here with Jeff Arrington on the phone from Marshall, Texas. It is a Tuesday morning on Voice in the Kingdom, and we're grateful for each and every person being tuned in, and we're we're here talking about the kingdom. That's what, well, that's what we're here to do, and And uh, Jeff, in his uh, 40 years of being in the Lord and being obedient and learning, we get to glean and get discipled uh, in his uh, in his leadership. And we're very grateful for it and uh, getting into some good stuff this morning. So, Brother Jeff, we're going to let you keep on trucking, brother. Well, it's nothing like understanding the time that we live in and and working with the Holy Spirit on where he has the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, I mentioned something last week about enforcing the victory of Christ. Remember that? Yeah, that's right. In, in enforcing his victory in 2020, that's what God told us in 2019, that, that 2020 will be a time that we have to enforce his victory. Yes. We have to enforce some things. We're enforcers, law enforcers, if you would. That's why Satan come out against authority, because he's lawless. That spirit is a lawless, renegade spirit. But we got to understand who we are now as a people called of God, called out of religion, See, and, and called out of the world system, Pharaoh's house, into the kingdom. And God wants to establish a kingdom culture in his church, see, not a religious culture, but a kingdom culture, see, and, and change this, this shift the, the paradigm, the way we think into kingdom thinking, kingdom constitution. And one of the ways we, we can understand the Bible is to understand the dispensations of time and like the seasons that we're in. And understanding that it's God's, it was in God's heart from the beginning. See, I show you a mystery, the Bible says, Christ in the church. The church was hid from the Jews. The church was hid from mankind. This thing was hid in God's heart until Christ came. And then Christ began to, to reveal some things. And then when he left, the apostles took it, and they began to reveal the ecclesia, the church, uh, his body. And it's a mystery to this thing both Gentiles and Jews. So we're going to pick up a story here that I mentioned briefly last week. I flew through it, but it's a nugget to me, and I always use it in my prayer time, and it's very prophetic. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 15. Let's look at this story here uh, so we understand what time it is. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you something in this. Matthew chapter 15. Let's start at verse 21. Then Jesus went and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Now, this generation has a devil, and we need to cast him out. So we're going we're gonna to get to that. But he answered her not a word. And the disciple came and sought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. Now, this woman was antagonizing, man. She wouldn't stop. She was crying out. She was desperate. That's a mother's plea, a mother's cry. And verse 24 says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, understanding time, Jesus said, look, it ain't the time for the Gentile. It's not time for y'all to eat the children's bread. It's not time for you. But listen to this. Then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And look at the love of our father. He can't help himself. Jesus can't help. Him. Verse 26. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. 
And she said, true, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs, right, which fall from the master's table. Mm. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou will. Now, her faith causes the Lord to even bypass times and seasons. Her faith in God and who Christ was even called God to move out of the time that he allotted uh, uh, for the Gentile. He hadn't been to the cross yet. He hadn't, he hadn't cleansed us yet. But because of her faith in who he was, he was moved with compassion. And he told her, look, woman, your faith has made your daughter whole. And look at how many times she could have been offended, right? Right. Look how many times she could have been offended. He wouldn't answer. He ignored her. <laughs> he he finally answers her. He says, look, I'm not taking the bread and giving it to dogs. Now, how many of us would have got offended at yeah, that she, point? She could have said, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> You people, <laughs> call her dog, all that. Oh, and she just agreed with it. True, true, true. I'm all there in a bag of chips. You're right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but he said, she said, true, Lord, but my daughter is sick, and even the dogs eat the crumbs. Wow. Now, this was during the time that before Calvary. Now, what I want to say is this time of crumbs is over with. Right. You understand? There was a shift and a change in the book of Acts, there was a turn and a shift, and something was completed when Christ died on that cross and said, it is finished. Something was completed. Now he's able to to fulfill the whole plan, the whole counsel, the whole mystery of God was to bring the Gentiles in to the same promise that he promised the Jews. And the Bible says in the book of Acts, the same Holy Ghost that fell in the upper room was the same Holy Spirit that fell in the room where Cornelius and the Gentiles were. Mm. There's been a shift and a change. And even Peter had to acknowledge it. Y'all know the story. He had a dream, and he said he wasn't going to eat it because it was unclean. God said, no, don't call something unclean that I made clean. Mm. The time has shifted. Get rid of your racism. Get rid of your paradigm. Get rid of all that. Understand that I have done something that's going to change the history of mankind. I have come and I have cleansed them of their sin. Now you can go to the Gentile. Now you can walk into their house. Because, you know, years ago, Jews couldn't even come into the house of Gentiles until Christ. So there's been a paradigm shift in the dispensations. Now we have access to God, just like the Jews. Now we don't have to eat the crumbs from the table, Whitney. We eat the whole loaf of bread. <laughs> Amen. And see... That's why I coined the phrase, no more crumbs. See? And see, we as body of Christ, we keep accepting the crumbs, the religious uh, uh, drippings of men and uh, the foundations of men, all these crumbs. No more crumbs. I want the whole counsel of God. I want the mysteries of God. I want that, that hidden riches that are in Christ Jesus. See, it's for you, child of God, man of God. You don't have to eat the crumbs anymore of a religion or some type of denomination. You don't have to eat the crumbs from the table. See, Jesus said that I am the bread of life. Come on. They that eat from me shall never die. See, See? just like that. And then he said, when you pray, pray, God, give us our daily bread. Hmm. What do you got there, Whitney? There's a fresh. J just Go like ahead. that, Brother Jeff, I've heard so many famous, famous preachers, got millions who've watched them preach a message that I know where it originated, but I don't want to call him out on the radio. And the message was, if I can only get a crumb, if you can just get And see, the kingdom mindset says you don't have to settle for crumbs. You you have the whole loaf. <laughs> Glory be to God. And we, the meat we and the cup to, and the whole the whole table. That's right. We got to get this message to out the there. <laughs> it's time see. It's time for us to pull up to the table. That's right. See, thou has set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now we get a chance to pull up to the table, just like any other man through the blood of Jesus. He's Glory. opened the way. He's made a way for us. No more crumbs. We don't have to settle uh, 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 for sitting in the back anymore. That's right. See, you, you don't have to settle uh, 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 for your 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 uh, natural heritage. Where you know I came from a poor family. I came from this. I came from that. Throw all that in the garbage. You are a child of the King, Lord to God. Amen. He, he's giving you a change of raiment. He's taking away that filthy garment off of you and put on you a garment of praise. Hmm. It's giving you a spirit now that you can, hallelujah, fellowship him without condemnation.
see. And we, if we would teach the body of Christ who we are, see, then go back to identity, who we are in Christ, see, we can cast Satan out of here, see. And that's the issue. He was cast out of heaven, right? Yeah. To the earth, right? He was cast out of heaven to the earth, realm is in Revelation 12. He was cast out with no room for him. As soon as Jesus got here 2,000 years ago, first thing he began to do was preach the kingdom and cast out devils. Hmm. What are we doing? What are we casting out? <laughs> <laughs> see, the thing about devils, see, if you want one, you can have one. I don't care if you're a Christian or not. If you want a devil, <laughs> he'll be glad to live with you. Nobody wants to hear that word, Brother Jim. <laughs> <laughs> can a Christian have a devil if he want to? Absolutely. But this is but this is the thing, though. Uh, this is the thing. God will not cast out your friends. He'll cast out your enemy. Now, if you're going to lay in the bed, like those guys you were talking about down there in New Orleans and, and promoting their flesh, see, they're demonically inspired. That's the doctrines of devils right there, see. Right. We come to cast that out. That's what I'm doing today. I'm casting out that mindset, see. Amen. Well, I'm like, casting out the Ishmael and her son. He said, cast out the bond woman and her son. That which is born of the flesh, that was sprung from the mind of men. We cast that out. See? You sound like it's Brother Squire. It's the spirit squire. that quicken and make alive. Amen. We got, we got a listener the saying flesh. that she's getting so excited in the car, she's saying, praise God, hallelujah. Now listen, if you're getting excited and having a Holy Ghost fit in your car, you got to pull over so you can listen to it and get going. Here. <laughs> there you go. And you got the corner phrase, no more crumbs, see? That's no right. more crumbs. And see, this thing reach all to your marriage, to your finance, to your children. No more crumbs. No more begging God. And, and, Glory and, be and, and all. That's over with. Mm. Yes. Mm. We're in a different dispensation, glory to God. We're in a dispensation of, of God's favor and God's grace, see, God's power. We have a right to come to the, this thing about this, Whitney. You have a right to come right before the throne of grace, the power, the rule, the dominion of God. Glory. And that throne has the ability to overrule any circumstance you face. Mm. God can overrule it. That's why the prayers of a righteous man, Quincy, is so powerful. Glory. See, the prayer of a righteous man avails much, much power is made available when people of God are right with God. We begin to pray. We can remove some demons out of here. We can remove some, some demonic governors and demonic mayors. Get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, and then we begin to, to occupy in their place. See, that's what the scripture says when he told Joshua, I want you all to possess the land. That word possess means to drive out previous tenants occupying their place. Hallelujah. And see, we're here to occupy. We're here to enforce the victory of Calvary. Not to beg for crumbs or some, some type of denomination or religion. It's time to cast off of that and become who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. Mm. It's time for us to come put on our right clothes, see. Put off, the, put off these religious garments and, and put on our royal robe, our royal apparel. See. Glory. Christ made us kings and priests. He made us. He didn't make us beggars and them beggar. We, we're not under the beggarly elements any longer. We're not subject to the world. We're not subject to the law of sin and death. And this is what I taught Sunday. I taught on the law of the kingdom with it, the law of the kingdom, out of Romans seven and eight. See, and the law of the kingdom. This is what we need to share with our you. Yes. Satan sowed uh, a demonic seed in us, and, and Paul said, there, there's something warring, a law warring in my members, that when I would do good, evil is present, right? When I would do good, I mean, there's this thing warring against me, another law of sin is warring. Who can deliver me from this body of death? Who can get me out of this thing? Then he said, I thank God, Jesus Christ. See? And go right back to the Messiah, go right back to the King of glory. I he can deliver you from the law of sin and death by your surrender to his kingdom. Amen. You don't have to struggle with this addiction. I'm talking to somebody. There's alcohol. You don't have to struggle with that no more. You don't have to struggle with that. Smoking, you don't have to struggle with that. See? Porno, you don't have to struggle with that anymore. All you got to do is submit, bow your knee to the king of glory. And that stuff will fall off of you automatically. Ooh. That desire to smoke, that desire to look at women, all that mess, it'll fall off of you because of the power of the Holy Ghost, man. Yes. Now, the power of the Holy Ghost is here. I see, that's a... See, if we would preach the pure Word of God again, Amen. 
Amen. Amen. They give people something to hold on to besides a religion. That's a that's a shift of paradigms right there because most of the time when you hear people refer to Romans seven, they're they're trying to preach it from an aspect of we all mess up, we all sin, even Paul did this and everybody tries to, to take that chapter right there and, and and make it okay to sin that God will rescue you out of it and, and you're just a sinner saved by grace. But see, kingdom shifts that. And says, God will give you power you not to sin. Glory be to God. Yes, there you go. The kingdom is all about sin has no more dominion over me. That's right. See, sin has no more dominion over me. The grace is to dominate sin. See, Come on. Not not to excuse us to do. God will, God will have great knowledge. Grace is to dominate sin. The Bible says we reign in this life by grace, by one Christ Jesus. This is, this is where we need to teach the right truth of the word of God. See? I didn't meet a religion. <clears throat> I met Jesus. That's why I can say, who had delivered me from this body of death? The Lord Jesus. He quickens our body. He makes us alive. Then you go right in there to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There's therefore now, what? No, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the who spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Come on. And see, that's what Satan's trying to tempt y'all down there in New Orleans. They're trying to tempt you with this race thing again and all this stuff and trying to get you to get in the flesh. Right. You didn't go for it, thank God. But thank see, God. Oh, that's Ishmael. That came from the flesh. But there's a true remnant in the earth today that's calling men to the spirit. <clears throat> see, in Christ Jesus, it's power. Then verse 2 says, for the law, now this is the law of the spirit of life. This is the law of the kingdom, the law of faith. The law of the spirit of life. Where is it? It's in Christ Jesus. What is the law? Tell me, tell me, Quincy, what is the law of gravity? You're coming down. <laughs> what goes up? It must come down. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> must come down. <laughs> That's the law, baby. If, if, I, if I jump off a building, where am I going? You're going down, brother. Thank you. That's the law, is it not? That's it. But there's another law called the law of lift. What is the law of lift? It's a greater force than the law of gravity, right? Yeah. So we see here that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is much more powerful than the law of sin and death. Amen. And one translation says, it exempts you from the law of sin and death. Hmm. So your past has no more power over you. What you did yesterday don't count. That's right. There's another law working your memory called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And even Paul said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it quickens you, makes you alive, quickens your mortal body. This is kingdom culture, kingdom attitude. This is what's going to change our culture if we can get back to the word of God and implement the law of the spirit of life right. See, in Christ Jesus. How do you activate the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus? By receiving Christ, it begins to activate in your life. It begins to nullify the laws of sin and death. In other words, tell me, who had the greater impact? Y'all tell me. When Satan hit the earth and tempted Eve, they fell. Good impact. Or when Christ hit the earth, glory to God. <laughs> well, the second one. <laughs> and brought in another power, a force that this world had never seen. Who had the greatest impact? Jesus. Amen. The law of sin and death of Christ Jesus. That's Christ what I'm trying Jesus. to tell you. He, he showed us throughout his whole walk that he he was not subject to the law of sin and death. Over and over and over and over and over. Prime example. Y'all know the story. They're going across the lake, going across the water. Jesus didn't go with them. All of a sudden, they see a man walking on the water. Right? Right. And they were terrified. They didn't know who it was. And they looked down and said, oh, my God, who is that? And somebody said, it's Jesus. And Peter heard it, Jesus. And he looked and he cried out, Jesus, can I come to you? <laughs> and he jumped out that boat and began to walk toward the Lord. Now, I know he took his eyes off God and began to sink, but at least he got out the boat. That's why I preach that message. Everybody always preaches that. At least he got that's, out that's the boat. The was scared to move, see. That's right. They weren't going to get out the boat. And they, and they know our people, well, he took his eyes off. No, he got out the boat. At least That's he stepped right. out the boat. God honored his faith. He took a few steps on the water. And he took his eyes off the Lord, and of course he began to sink. But you see, 
when you when you put your eyes on Jesus, see, you can override natural laws. I know the doctor reports that you got cancer, fourth stage, but I'm telling you, there's something higher than that. Mm, yes. This stage four cancer. You know what it is? You know what's higher than stage four cancer? The name he of sent Jesus. His word. That's right. <laughs> and healed them. Amen. And delivered them from destruction. Mm. See, you can take that word right there, mix it with faith. Understand that God took your infirmity and board on that tree, mix it with faith. That cancer began to, to, to retract and dry up in your body right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. See, they talking about COVID-19, all this mess, COVID-19, COVID-19. There's a higher law in the earth than COVID-19. Glory. And it's already beginning to come out. And then doctors say, oh, my God, it's a simple solution. I'm mean, listening. I say, yeah, the, the truth going to come out. Because Satan, you know, Satan's always trying to promote his agenda through something. So now they're trying to take COVID-19 and push political campaign, mm -hmm. you know, trying to keep the economy poor so they can, you know, be against Trump. But I know what's going on. We ain't no fool, right? Name. We've been around a little while, right, Quincy? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean I, I wasn't born yesterday. They're trying to push this COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID-19. Restrict the doctors. Keep the doctors. Shut up. Don't say that. Why? Because money and positions, right? You know, that's Satan's domain. That's what he thrives in, bribery and money. But there's a remnant that's praying now for the truth to come out. And we're breaking through, see? Breaking through. Even this month, I'm decreeing it's going to be a breakthrough month, August, breakthrough month, when it comes to COVID-19. God's going to blow up Satan's plans and strategies. He's blowing them up in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, the house of lies are falling apart, see. Amen. He built this house of lies, now it's falling apart. Over this COVID-19, he built the house of lies, and it's falling apart. Because there are already solutions and remedies. God already given man knowledge, and, and, and then if we have to use the supernatural, we can. But God has already given us common sense and on how, what to use to, to, to beat this thing. So... I'm here to say that the kingdom of God supersedes the natural realm. But we got so many, like you said, with so many in the flesh, not willing to learn. You got to talk to somebody and they're going to stay with their denomination and their, and their teachings and whatever, whatever, whatever. The pastor in his position, he's been there so long, he don't want to change. He don't want to make room for nobody else. He don't want to get nobody money but himself and his wife or whatever. Throw that all in the garbage and say, Father, your will be done. See, now the kingdom begins to spread. Right, And I, I want to teach young men, long, young leaders, how to understand the government of God, how to come into the, the expansion of God's kingdom in your thinking and not be so tunnel vision, so tunnel mind with fivefold gifts and not understanding the government and the kingdom of God, how it functions. And see, that's our calling because God is wanting a, a kingdom of priests. He's always wanted it from Exodus all the way back to the book of Exodus. God is wanting a, a kingdom of priests. Not one or two clergymen that put a sign on their parking space, you can't park in that space. That's the pastor's park. Now, I understand that. It may move for the man of God. I understand some of that. But you got to understand, God has leveled the playing field. There's no such thing as clergy, clergy and laity in the body of Christ. There's no such thing. That's the old the Levitical order. And it negates the forces of life. All that is is crumbs. I don't want no more crumbs. How about y'all? I'm, I'm at the table. You're sitting at the table, Quince. <laughs> That's right. Well, you get to eat the whole loaf, baby. You get to eat the whole buffet, the whole <laughs> kingdom. All God promises are yes and amen. All of it's been fulfilled, and you get to eat it. It'll change your life, your wife, your children, if you begin to implement the laws of the kingdom. And I call this the law of faith. We'll get into the last, the last thing we'll do is the law of faith. But anyway, you get to implement this truth, and it begins to change your whole world. Because the kingdom of God is right now. See, a lot say, well, it's coming. No, no, the kingdom of God is here. And it's coming. Yes, it's coming, and it's already come. See, and it's come by the Spirit of God. It's here by the Holy Spirit. And our young people have to realize, we have to make them understand something. God never meant for us to live this life alone, apart from Him, and trying to resist temptation, trying to resist Satan, trying to resist sin. And that, that's not the way. God said, you shall receive what? power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This power gives you the ability to say no to sin. No to premature sex. No to, to sex outside of marriage. No, 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 no. See? 
and become that example, become that, 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 that testimony to share with young people in your generation that God is a keeping God. God can keep you to marriage, man. See, we need testimonies like that among the youth. God's able to keep the young lady all the way till she get married. He, she can keep the young man. That's the power of God. Amen. Not always telling, well, you know, you're going to fall. No, 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 no. You don't have to fall. Down to him who's able to keep you from falling. You can go all the way with God. You can go all the way. Amen. Because of his grace. You can go all the way. But see, we're teaching a watered down, weak gospel that causes the children to, to not have faith, see, in the almighty God. Because our watered down traditional uh, messages that have no power. No power at all. Right. But there is a remnant. Let's go back to the remnant. That's beginning to change from glory to glory by beholding Jesus. See, when we take our eyes off Jesus, see, we, we, we're not changing. But when we look at Jesus, the, the scriptures is clear out of Corinthians, as we behold him, we'll change, right? Right. As we behold him. So yeah. Satan always try to replace him with something. See? Get our eyes on something else, something else. You know, our dreams, our visions, our ministries, or something, 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 something. We got to make sure we can stay Christ-centered. As we keep our eyes upon him, we'll change from glory to glory, from glory to glory, glory to glory. And I'm here to tell you, people out there, if you just acknowledge Jesus right now, see, he'll begin to order your steps. He will send you men and women that will help you, the right ones, that will speak the right voice, see, the ones that will carry his mantle and begin to train you up through your acknowledging of his lordship of your life. Let him be lord of your life. He'll order your steps. Want to he, he order your steps, Whitney? He'll run across you like crazy men like me, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that'll shake your world because a lot of times, you know, you we get into that safe mindset. Well, we we understand everything, you know. Then God sends somebody to shake us up. It happens all the time. Yes, it does. Because there's always more of him, right? But it's good. Always, always more. Mm. So my admonition to the body of Christ is stay open to truth. Always be a student of truth. Never settle and come to the conclusion that you got it and you know it all. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm, I'm still learning, man. I still got a long way to go. I mean, we'll never get there because God is so deep and so so vast that it's no, Isaiah said there's no searching of his understanding. It's so deep. Hmm. But I love the journey, man. I love to discover more and more about Jesus. Yes. I mean, this this he's a deep, deep well, is he not? Amen. Yes, he is. Is he not a deep well? Mm. And we get to draw whenever. Well, yeah, we get to let down our buckets today and draw. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell y'all a story when we come back off the break about the bucket. But praise be to God that the kingdom culture is here with it. And you're a part of it. I'm part of it. Whether any man or anybody else, that's for me in my house. See, that's for me in my house. I want the kingdom culture. Hallelujah. I want the kingdom constitution. I want the kingdom foundation. Mm. I want the kingdom language. Kingdom marriage, kingdom finances. Don't get me to preaching, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> you always do that right before the break. Well, you the you can ask Brother Quincy. I've got one, two, three. He's got about three or four little I've pages got, of notes here. I've got so. four uh, <laughs> little things I wrote down, four different messages I'm getting ready to preach. Uh, yeah, one of them is having a teachable spirit. Mm. The other one is there you go. getting out of the boat. You know, just there, there's some other ones I'm gonna keep on wraps. So we, we won't, you know, we gotta have something. We gotta have, have something. There's no concealed. We gotta have some yeah. kind of concealed some, weapon. Some mystery there. I've got now. a bunch of them wrote down here. Just after today, the Lord just downloaded into me. Man. Yeah. Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. yeah there's man. there's no patent in well, the kingdom, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, <laughs> we're gonna take a break right here. We'll come back and we'll get the story out of Jeff Arrington about the bucket here in just a minute. All right, and we're back with Voice in the Kingdom. 
Oh, welcome back in, folks. And uh, we got our second trivia question out there. In which book of the New Testament is the word Easter used? 270-257-2689. Uh, we still have Brother Jeff Arrington on with us. we got Brother Whitney Ward here in the studio. And uh, we were going to break talking about drawing from the well. And Jeff promised a story about the bucket. So we're going to get we're going to let him loose on that. Yeah, we've been drawing all morning on this bucket, but uh, I heard a man of God was preaching on a story uh, about some uh, fishermen way down in the Amazon area in the ocean there, and they were went out for you know for a run, and and uh, they ran out of water, <clears throat> and uh, three days into the trip, you know, they became desperate, and uh, they were at the point of dehydration, and you know, panic was setting in a little bit, but uh, they saw in the distance another ship. And so the captain told one of the guys to signal the ship, tell them we need some water. <laughs> so he, they signaled the, the boat that was way off, and uh, the boat responded back. And he and he told them, uh, drop the bucket. <laughs> and the captain couldn't understand, what did he mean, drop the bucket? We need some water. So they signaled him again, and the uh, ship did the same thing, drop your bucket. <laughs> And the captain just was so confused, he didn't know what to do. So well, finally, uh, he said, well, we got nothing to lose. They dropped the bucket. And guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Fresh, clean, cold, pure water. <laughs> well, they didn't know that for 200 miles, the Amazon River is so powerful, it pushes in fresh water for over 200 miles into the ocean. And fresh water is a lot heavier than salt water. It pushed all the salt water to the bottom, and all the fresh water was up top. But for 200 miles, they were floating in fresh, pure water and didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how powerful is that? That'll, that'll preach a little bit. And so I'm telling the body of Christ, drop your bucket. Drop, drop your bucket. There's fresh water. The kingdom of God is here. There's, and that's what we're drinking from, the wells of salvation. And that's what the encounter at the well with the woman of Samaria, Samarita, that's what Jesus told the woman. Look, if you knew we were talking to you, you would drop your bucket, girl. <laughs> and Man. your failure in life is not realizing who your God is. Mm. See, not realizing the one that, that will uh, satisfy you, the one that will meet your needs. And Jesus even told that the one you stand with is not your husband. And you've had five because you're thirsty. You're looking. You're thirsty, girl. And he said, look, I'm what you've been looking for. If you ask me, I give you living water. And, uh, of course, if you read the story, it changed her whole life. She went to the city, preached Jesus. They came back. The whole city came out. The revival, people getting saved out of that one encounter at the well. Yeah. Because when, when you drink from his water, when you drop your bucket in his well, you'll never thirst again. Amen. And she's been having all these relationships, and none of them worked out. But when she met Jesus, hallelujah, when she met Jesus, she met what she was looking for. Mm -hmm. See, that longing of her soul to be fulfilled by her maker. And uh, I'm here to tell you, drop your bucket. Drop your bucket. The Lord Jesus will give you living water. And that's Hallelujah. what we eat, living water. Not the stale salt water, but I'm talking about living water. See? Mm -hmm. That will cause you to live and be satisfied and content. Glory to God. Wherever you find, whatever state of mind you find yourself with Jesus Christ, you can be content. He's the deep well. And I don't have time, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but of course, you know, from that story came forth a revival in that whole city. The whole city came out to the Lord, and many came to the Lord and believed and uh, because of that one encounter. Wow. But I'm here to tell you, if you just drop your bucket today, mm -hmm. see, God wants to restore your life. God wants to restore you. God wants to put your family back together. God wants to put your relationships back together. But it starts with him. Giving him a try, giving him a shot. Amen. And this, uh, our, our certain—I mean, this circumstance that we find ourselves in in a nation—I'm telling you, Whitney, Quincy, God raised us up for this hour. There's certain, and in every generation, God has a people raised up for that hour. And I know that I know that I know we were born for such a time as this. Hallelujah. And this is our time to make an impact, see, in our generation. Is our time. 
And uh, we're talking about Whitney having a summit again, you know, getting the people together, getting everybody together. We got some wonderful guys that can preach the word here. Man, we'll bring all everybody and whoever, you know, you guys know, and, and uh, we'll come together, see, and give God opportunity to speak to us, see. Yes. From a kingdom perspective, from a kingdom perspective, see. And I've been doing a little teaching with it called The Reality of Jesus Christ, see. And coming from a little word called perception, perception. The ability to see something in its reality, perception. And it comes from the word, who do men say that I am? What do you perceive? Who, what am I? <laughs> see? Right. And the Bible says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? <laughs> what do you see? And then Jesus told him, you can't, if, unless you're born again, you can't see. It's all about perception, right? Right. And the ones that, it's like the two thieves, one perceived nothing, Jesus was nothing, and the other one perceived that he was God Almighty. Now, now what was the response of the one that saw him as nothing? Though he was right beside him. Nothing happened for him. Nothing happened. He, he mocked him. <laughs> but the one that acknowledged did. him, right, the one that saw him and perceived who he was, Jesus told him, Today hey, you'll be with today me. Today you're gonna be with me. Come on. Today you can be with the Lord in paradise. He said, Today you're gonna enter my kingdom. Today. That's right. Why? Because it's all about perception. Who do you mean say that I am? Mm. Right? Right. If you see him as just, you know, uh, a choice you can make from another religion, you know, Jesus another choice, you know, they talk about him all that. There's no power in that. But the person that sees him as, as as the son of God, Christ Christo, the son of God, he has the ability to change your life, change and alter your destiny. Now, I can only preach from what I've been, see. He changed my life. Once I perceived who he was, once he revealed himself to me and I received that, see, my life began to change. This is kingdom progression. He began to progress my life from nothing to, to the revelation of sonship, and now I know where I belong, see. And this is called perception, being able to see the reality of Christ Jesus. Now, I got this from the story of, uh, you know what happened on the, on the Mount of Transfiguration, we call it, right? Y'all know the story? Right. You know the story of the Mount of Transfiguration where he took Peter, James, and John? Yes, sir. You know sir. that story, right? And, and guess what, Whitney? They took him up to a, the Bible says that Jesus in, in, in Matthew 17, 1, he took Peter, James, and John up to a high mountain, right? Right. To a high mountain. And there he was transformed into his reality, who he really was. In other words, he unzipped the, 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 the flesh suit, took it off, and he said, boy, this is who I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bible says he began to shine, man, the glory of God. I bet that was a sight to see. Wow. But anyway, they saw him in his reality. But he even prophesied there's going to be some standing here that will not taste death till they see me in my glory, in my kingdom. And he began to fulfill that on that mountain. And this was the transitional voice to me. Because you remember, now I'm going to get into this here in the next few weeks. The the first time God came down to Mount Sinai, remember when Moses went up to Mount Sinai? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did he receive? The law, right? Yeah. But when Peter, James, and John went up to that mountain set apart on that high place, what did they receive? Grace. See, they received they received the revelation of grace. Come on. Grace and truth. Christ Himself. It was so powerful, even Peter took record of it in his writings, remember? He says, I have a, he said, I saw him. I was an eyewitness. You, you do good to listen to me. I saw him as he was. Right. And now years and years later, he says, Peter says, that I have a more sure word now. In other words, I've been dealt with. I've been changed. Now I have a more, even more sure word. I'm more convinced that he's the king of glory. I saw him in his glory. Now he's saying, I'm more convinced at the end of his life. And see, I can say the same thing. Forty years later, I'm more convinced that he's the king of glory. See? Yeah. Because I perceive him in who he is, his reality. And that's the kingdom of God. See? When you see Jesus as he is and who he is, it can't help but change your life. 
Yeah. But see, there's so much uh, uh, mixture and, and, and so much overtones in the word where people can't see Jesus as he is. So what we do, we create a God in our own image, right? And we create this Jesus <laughs> to fit our lives, don't we? Mm-hmm. It, <clears throat> it, we, we, create, that we create a Jesus to fit our lives. Say, for instance, those boys you met down in New Orleans. Now, Paul talked about another Jesus and another Christ, right? Another gospel. What kind of Jesus were they preaching? Um, I, I really didn't stick around long enough to figure it out, but it sounded like a hate Jesus. <laughs> I was going to say it was a militant. Yeah. Militant. Uh, yeah. Only on that's what their, I mean. Yeah. They create. See, they created another Christ and called it Christ. That's right. Which was not Christ. See, that's what. That's my point. That's what we do. We create God in our own image. See, and we created a Christ to try to fool and deceive people. Satan is behind that. See, right. and that goes on. And that's how you know you get the militant Muslims. That's how you get the the, the soft. Uh, uh, deceive Mormons. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth, right? <laughs> Mormon religion is all pretty and, and pretty and plain, but it's just as deadly as a rattlesnake because you got to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. The same thing with the, you know, the, the sugar-coated uh, Jehovah Witness religion, and it's just a religion that's, that's a, a diversion from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? You're right. It's just a, it's just a diversion, right? That's, the Watchtower and all this Jehovah stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a, a diversion from the King of Glory. Amen. And see, that's what Satan has set up, all these other Christs and all these other Jews. That's not him. Mm. See, it's not Christ. But Whitney, God is raising up sons now that know him. And and this is what the letters to, to, to John was saying. I write unto you, young man, because you have known him from the beginning. It's all about knowing him and able to to from your life now and your history with him able to now demonstrate and testify of him where others can taste Jesus see they can taste it and that's what's going on in the radio right now people can hear the truth and their spirit will bear witness to the truth see and that's what changes us because right. there's a spirit in man right Amen. Every man has a spirit. And when they, when someone speaks, God has given us an anointing to bear witness to that truth or to reject that truth. Right. Now, it would have been easy, Whitney, for you, when, when we came down there, and we were of the devil, right? We had another spirit. <laughs> it would have been easy for you to say, no, there's something wrong with them guys. <laughs> right. Why? Because because there's an anointing that abides in you. Well, that First time, Quincy, Whitney told you about uh, this, this guy named Jeb, and you heard me on the radio. So your spirit would have said, no, 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 something wrong here, man, yeah. with this dude. Yeah. See, well, that, that because was... God has put an anointing in us, and, and it keeps us from deception. That, that was divinely set up, though, because for, uh, for 10 years, the Lord has told me in my spirit, shift the paradigm. And for 10 years, I've been going, Lord, I, who am I to shift a paradigm? What? What are you talking about? And then you got up to preach, and the very first five minutes you were preaching, you said God has chosen us in this kingdom remnant to shift the paradigm. And I went, oh, my goodness, that's what I've been looking for for 10 years, that word right there. And so that was was divinely said. Well, that's it right there. That was the mic drop right there. Uh, (laughs) And uh, But before we go to our break. Yeah, go ahead, Whitney. Okay. When Jesus was on that mountain, first thing he did is he said, let's build three churches. Let's, let's work. Let's do something. And what God, and then it just all shut down. Because, and that's what we do so often. Instead of just receiving from God, it should just say, wow, I see you in your glory. I just want to receive that. I don't want to get my eyes off of it. We go, we want to do something. We want to add something to it. We want to make something. And, and, and a lot of the kingdom is just receiving it. Mm. Just receiving it. Yeah. Glory be to God. There you go. Yeah. Amen. That's All it. right. Well, we got one more segment to to dive into some more of this. Uh, we're going to go to this last break. We'll be right back. Final segment of this Tuesday morning on Voice in the Kingdom. Good news from WBFI. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. 
and knoweth God. 1 John 4, 7 from Box 2 Radio Network. All right, and we're back with the Voice in the Kingdom. Thank you, Anita. We've got about 10 minutes left here on this Tuesday morning. We're going to dive back into some things here with Brother Jeff Arrington talking about shifting paradigms. That's We've been, kind of been branded that here on this broadcast anyway. We're always kind of shifting stuff around, and uh, it's all good stuff uh, from the kingdom, and we're very excited to share that with you, our listener, and uh, we're very very grateful for the opportunity to be here and be obedient to that. And uh, I hadn't heard that story before, Whitney. You didn't tell me that story before. I was, I'm glad to have learned. I don't think that. I've ever told anybody that story except yeah. for Jeff. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Lord has a way of ordering our steps. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's no accident. I believe in his, his providential rule and his sovereign rule. And uh, we're, we're all here by design, see. Mm. Uh, we've all been predestinated to be here at this time. And uh, nothing catches the Lord off guard. He sets it all up. He knows the end from the beginning, see. And he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, right? The beginning and the end. I'm the author of your faith here. So we know that he's sovereign and that he's the all-knowing God. Now, we're in this nation called America by design. And uh, not by accident, see, by design, on purpose. And we have to understand why we're here, why God chose us. For the Bible declares in John, I said, I chose you, you didn't choose me. Right. And ordained you that you may go forth and bring forth fruit. This is the kingdom. The kingdom is all about bringing forth fruit. It's not about having religious titles and positions and, and, and knowledge. It's all about you know a tree by its fruit. And the kingdom of God is all about bearing fruit. God's ability to go in and change a man from glory to glory, right? And that man begins to produce a different taste to his family, to his wife, to his children. Why? As an, a result of the encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what makes the nation great. When men encounter the Lord, and he begins to make a, a, a unregenerate husband a man of God. Unfaithful husband, a loyal husband. See, God does that. And he, he begins to uh, bring us under his rule, and we begin to train our children up in the way they should go by the counsel of God. And then they become outstanding citizens, not only of the natural America, but of the kingdom of God. Now, it starts, I'm going to give you a scripture out of Psalms. Uh, let's go to Psalm uh, 33, Psalm 33. And this is his sovereignty. Listen to this. It says in verse 10, The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. And that's what I've been praying over this nation. All the devices, all of, the, all of this conjuring up the witchcraft and all this stuff that Satan conjured up, it will have no effect on the purpose of God. No effect. Verse 11 says, The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart it's to all generations. God had a plan. I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. And uh, verse 12 is where I want to get to. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he have chosen for his inheritance. Now, we are a blessed nation because we make God the Lord of this nation. See? But... If the nation as a whole don't want the Lord, that's fine. There's a people here that still claim his lordship. And that's all God needs is a remnant, right? All he needs is <laughs> if he can find 10 righteous, right? That's, that's right. right. He'll save the nation. That's what he told Abraham. If I can find 10. And I'm here to tell you, God got millions of saints in this country. Glory. Many of saints around the world that love him. Many saints born of the spirit that love the, God, the Lord. And I'm here to tell you, this nation is blessed because we make the Lord, see, over this nation. One nation under God. Mm. And I'm here to tell you, if we would just now come together again, declare his lordship over this nation, see. Remember I said, the power of a righteous man's prayer? Availeth much. James wrote it down. He said, man, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah prayed and it rained not. He prayed again and God opened the heavens. Then he said the effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. Much. Come on. Much. And and I've been asking God to open the heavens and let the floodgates open. Bring the Holy Spirit on another level, Lord. He said in the last day I will pour out my spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. Pour out my spirit. To me, I see it as like, it's so like you open the floodgates, you know, and it just overruns the land, overruns demons, devils, lies, just wash it all out. You know what I mean? Yep. And America needs a flood right now. <laughs> right? But it's a flood of the Holy Spirit. That's right. It's when God opens the floodgates of heaven and he pours out the Holy Spirit. He said he would do it. So I'm just agreeing with the word. That in the last days, he said, I will pour out my spirit, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, right? Right. And this is where he overwhelms the devil, see, with his spirit. And I believe he will wash away, see, all the filth and all the demons all across this land with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So I'm asking everybody to join us. We're praying that, that in these last days that God will pour out his spirit. And that he will open the floodgates of heaven, see, and cause even, it says, even Zechariah asked for the rain in the time of the latter rain. So we're asking for showers, showers of grace and, and, and the floodgates of heaven to open and begin to turn people, awaken people to the kingdom, awaken people uh, uh, to the righteous rule of Jesus Christ. Because there is, uh, I mean, we're in the last days, you can tell, uh, I have never seen anything like this in my whole existence, what we see now. Yeah. But I bring hope, like the man's testimony, the young man's testimony I saw last night uh, coming out of homosexuality. God can bring you out, man. God is still the deliverer. Amen. Is he not? Yeah. He's still the deliverer. That's yeah, right. he's a deliverer, and he can deliver homosexuals. He can deliver alcoholics. He can he can deliver drug addicts. God still is delivering people. He can deliver religious people from their denomination into the kingdom. God can deliver you from your situation if you will just acknowledge Him. Amen. And blessed are you who make God your Lord. Blessed is the man whose God is the Lord. And mm. I'm telling you, this time to receive the blessing from the Lord, and that is to deliver you from your present situation into his kingdom. It's available for you. Let down your bucket. Amen? Amen. Put that bucket bucket in the water. That's right. Let your bucket down. There's fresh water underneath you. Just don't. Mm. <laughs> Amen. You're dry, you're thirsty, you're dehydrated spiritually. Let your bucket down. That's good. If you need to talk to us, like I said, Quincy, <clears throat> Whitney, you give them our church number or whatever. If you need a counsel, you need a, a phone conference, you need counsel, you need wisdom, you want more more kingdom information, kingdom knowledge, you can get a hold of us. We're here to serve. That's right. Give that church number one time for the people. Well, our, our church number is 903-935-935. 7924. If you get the machine, just ask for me. We'll get back with you. Leave a number. We'll call you back. We'll set up a conference, and, and, and you can remove from glory to glory. Your life can begin to progress, and your life can, can begin to move in the spirit. Lightning speed. Mm. Isn't that right, Whitney? That's and right. You can learn more in one year than you learn in 30 years, right, Whitney? <laughs> that's, that's me. I, I've been doing Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah. I've, I've been doing that. Amen. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, we, I can't even, yeah, I, I say it a lot, man. I, I, if I could put everything I've learned in the last year and the last 30 years, it'd have been a whole lot easier, but my brain is swimming all the time. And, uh, but I love it. I enjoy it. And I, I love that I get to share this experience with our, our listeners and, and, uh, folks like you and, and Whitney and people that we get to have in here, man, I tell you, it's something else. Uh, well, man, no more crumbs, brothers. That's, no that's more right. crumbs. No more crumbs. <laughs> Pull up to the table. Amen. That's good. Tied uh, up to the tables. You're right. Amen. Well, Brother Jeff, thank you so much for coming on with us, brother. We always look forward to it. Well, bless you all, and we'll, we'll keep this thing moving. And uh, Whitney, I'll be calling you on the dates, man, and uh, we'll, we'll see what God do. Amen. All right. Amen. We're looking forward to that, right. too. 
All oh, right. Man. That's, all right. Uh, that's Jeff Arrington again from Marshall, Texas, and uh, we mm-hmm. definitely always appreciate him coming on. He just put his no- the phone number out there for the church at Marshall. Again, 903-935-7924. If you want to reach out to him uh, personally, you can do that. And, yeah. Uh, that's, that's good stuff. You know, in his story about drop the bucket, he, I liked how the fresh water was on top of the salt water. Mm-hmm. You know, and so often – <clears throat> we look at it as people got to go through so much to get to God. Mm. Well, what if we got the fresh water coming out of us to where they didn't have to go so far? Man. In other words, we, we made the gospel and the kingdom available to men, women, and children to a way that all they had to do was drop their bucket. That's it. They didn't, because we're always looking at, you know, when they hit the bottom, when they hit the bottom, they'll look up. What if they didn't have to hit the bottom? What if we brought, what if we brought the fresh water of God up to the place yeah. to where it's so available to them mm. and they taste and see that the Lord is good, the Bible says. Amen. Just get a taste. See, Just get a drink. That's where religion Glory. wants you to be. Wants you to right. be thinking about being at the bottom and having to come up through an organization or come Ooh. up through a person. That's right. A carnal person. That's <laughs> right. Oh, man. I, I wrote this down. I said, get out of the carnal comfort of religion and embrace the power of the kingdom. And then that's how you enforce his victory. Hallelujah. Mm. That's good stuff. All right. Well, we are uh, at the end of another broadcast. It always goes by so fast. And uh, we thank you for listening. This has been Voice in the Kingdom.